Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Maybe this is your first time tuning in and joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you and trust you're blessed with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. We want to continue to pray about the direction and the condition of our nation and our world. We also want to pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church, and you just put your church and your pastor in that in that place. And we want to pray for our brothers and sisters around the world. Please continue to pray um, for uh, the Davies family, the Harris family, and Sister Jamie, Prado, Ayla, and Nora. Maybe you have a special and spoken request. It's a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you, praise you, adore you, and worship you. Father, we pray for our nation and our world that is in gross darkness. God, we pray for a great ineffectual door of utterance to be opened up to the people of God in this hour, in this nation, and in this world. God, we also pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. Pray that you'll continue to open up the windows of heaven and pour out your favor and your blessing upon this people. And lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world, you'd furnish each and every one of them with a hedge of protection. We ask all these things in the name above every other name, the name of Jesus. Everybody said amen. Familiar passage of scripture, one verse of scripture found in John chapter 5 and verse number 39. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Amazing verse of scripture. How many people do you know that are non-apostolic that actually would fulfill that scripture that said they search the scriptures? There's not a lot. A lot of the denominational and charismatic ministry that is so active in our world today, and it just seems like everybody is, is moving towards an entertainment style of ministry. Um, it's relegated to what is God going to do for you today and what is God going to uh, God has this for you today. And this, this is the day of, of, of your blessing. And this is, I, I'm going to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if there was an ever a day and an hour where the entirety of the human race needs to search this incredible ancient and forever relevant every day, every hour, every minute, every second, every nanosecond of existence. This book is ever present and ever relevant. It is now. Search the scriptures for in them ye think think. Now, this is how I understand that scripture. That people are on the wrong rabbit trail. Um, 
What's beautiful about John is there appears to be a trajectory, and there's this is just going to be a very thumbnail sketch. But John chapter 2, you have Jesus turning water into wine. John chapter 3, you have entrance into the kingdom of God that's being given there. In um, John chapter number 4, you have the woman at the well that is incredible passage of scripture. We're going to look at one scripture here in a moment out of there. John chapter 5, there is an amazing healing that takes place. And it just seems like with every single chapter, and I and I have to tip my hat to Trinitarian translators that actually put the chapter and, and verse divisions and breaking breaking the word of God down to where it was palatable and understandable. And you can understand the challenge that they really had. But when you have the chapter divisions, but it just appears that with every single chapter, at least in the beginning of the book of John, that there is there is a treasure in a field. There is a there is a definitely discoverable revelation of truth that is found in each one of those chapters. And here this scripture is found about search the scriptures for in them you think. You may not really have, you may not really comprehend, you may not really have have, have discovered gold. You think that you have eternal life. When I think of this passage of scripture, this one verse of scripture, I also think of this in John chapter number four. This is an amazing statement. Jesus saith unto the woman, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. Now this is, this is Jesus talking to the woman at the well. I do not have time to get in and explain something that I have discovered in John chapter number four, but it is mind-boggling. For me, it's mind-boggling. The revelation and the understanding that's re what's really taking place here in John chapter four. But in the course of this conversation with this woman, Jesus says, you worship, you know not what. How many of us could get away with telling somebody that that goes to a denominational church, non-denominational church, ecumenical church, charismatic church, you name it. Not very many. That probably would not fly because people are convinced that what they have is truth. And of course, Jesus is revealing unto this woman um, that worshiped in Mount Gerizim. It was a mountain in Samaria, and the Samaritans were half-breeds. They were half Assyrian, and they were half Jewish, and they were a reminder. They were hated of the Jews because they were a reminder of the times of the Gentiles and a time when they were captives, uh, not just Babylon, which was the head of Nebuchadnezzar's image, but the Syrians, which was the second regime and the second component in that image. And they intermarried with the Jews and they produced the Samaritans. God had not completely forsaken the Samaritans because Jesus must needs go into Samaria. And in Acts chapter eight, we see that the evangelist Philip goes even before the apostles and there is revival in Samaria. They held to some of the Jewish writings, but they added a lot of their own belief system to 
um, the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible they held to. But they put a lot of other stuff. Hence, they worshipped at Mount Gerizim, and the Jews worshipped in Jerusalem. You worship, you know not what. Search the scriptures, for in them you think. This entire devotional is just to say one thing. I want to thank God in front of this entire viewing audience for the truth and understanding of the word of God. When I first came into this many, many, many moons ago, I had no comprehension whatsoever. I was raised United Methodist. Um, I was raised not reading the word of God, not understanding the word of God, not comprehending the word of God, not, not ever seeing any behavior that was reflected out of the word of God. I had absolutely no comprehension at all. It was a blank wall. I walked into an apostolic church and everything changed. You and I in this hour, this is still our greatest tool. This right here. And people do not know what they're worshiping. They're, uh, some of the, some of the, um, and I don't spend a lot of time doing this, but maybe, maybe you've seen the same thing. Maybe see a little clip of something that's on YouTube from a church somewhere and some of the things that are going on. It's just absolutely incredulous that people have moved further and further. As time goes on, as time moves this way, on another graph, they're moving farther and farther and farther away from comprehension and understanding the word of God. I thank God for an understanding of the word of God. When I first got saved, I was, it was before the age of entertainment, really. And I, and I know that there was television. I was raised by a television and television and movies and all of that in the 60s and 70s and 80s. And, but now you have the smartphone and it's taken entertainment to a whole nother level. But I want to tell you that you need to shut your phone off. You need to shut off your laptop. You need to cancel this, cancel that, cancel this, cancel that. And start digging because you and I have an understanding of truth. I've talked a lot about this during these devotionals because I really do understand, uh, at least with my own testimony and in dealing with other people, the value of this. Just something as, as simple as Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. It's everything. It is absolutely everything. Okay, I knew this was going to be a little bit different this morning, kind of going in a couple different directions, but I just want to give praise and honor and thanks unto God for this. God bless you. Take this off the dining room table and look at it. Read it. Search it. And you will find a well of life springing up. God bless you. Have a blessed day. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank God for the truth. It looks like you're going hunting with your coat, brother. 
Brother Jordan is a hunter. 